morning. morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hello to all of you here in person and those uh, joining online live right now or later. Those who may be out uh, running this morning for the uh, breast cancer run. I hope uh, the run is going well as, uh, as well today. It's good to be with you here today as we worship our God. Our liturgist today is Angie Bo. Our uh, acolyte is Caden Petrick. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. We've gathered in the holy presence of God, the one who etches grace on our hearts. This is, this is the place where God will transform us into disciples. We glorify our God, who yearns for justice, not just for a favored few, but for the least of our world. This is the place where God will write compassion on our souls. We give thanks to God for unceasing grace. We remember God's persistence in saving us. This is the place where God will breathe the word. Please listen to our opening prayer and pray with me. O oh God, who writes on our hearts, you have never abandoned us in amazing and persistent grace. You have kept covenant with us, and we thank you for loving us even when we have not loved you. We belong to behold the day of your appearing, even as we stand now in view of your kingdom promised and made present in Christ Jesus, in whose name we wait and pray. Amen. Hear now the call to confession. Jesus calls us to enter the joy of discipleship, the joy of following in his way. But sin clings closely, and we struggle to respond fully to Christ's invitation. Let us seek God's forgiveness so that we may know more deeply the joy God intends. Join me in our prayer of confession. 
Merciful God, in Jesus, our risen Lord, we have seen your glory, yet our sinfulness often blocks out the light of Christ. We are quick to accuse and slow to confess. We find faults easily in others while ignoring our own shortcomings. We have squandered your gifts. We have turned from your ways. We have ignored your word. Have mercy on us, compassionate God. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our sinful lives. Wash us with your love and cleanse us with your grace that day by day we might move closer to the people you would have us be. Hear these prayers as we add now our personal con silence. Amen. Join me in our assurance of pardon. Relentlessly, God seeks us out with abundant grace and boundless mercy. God seeks us out. Receive with joy this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Share the peace you've received through Christ with one another. Peace be with you. As we share signs of the peace of Christ with one another, I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for a time on the chancel steps. Good morning, Emerson. How are you? Good morning, Emery. Good morning, Lanali. Good morning, Dawn. I've got something here. What do you think is in this little case? Something red. Something red? Yep, you see that? You see something red in there. What, what might it be? Mm. Let you peek. Do you have a guess? Flashlight? Ooh, it flashlight. Does, look, does look like two flashlights side by side, doesn't it? But what happens about binoculars. binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Aren't they cool? So, uh, what do you do with binoculars? You look. Yeah? Like this? No. Like this? No. Like this? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hey Matt. You're looking good. All right. Good good to see you. Good to see you all out there. Wow, this is a this is an interesting way to view the congregation. Do you wanna look? Do you wanna look? Can you see him? See him up close. Let's see if anybody uh, needs to shave or anything. So what are some ways you might use binoculars other than to look at the congregation really closely? Looking. 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 Yeah, things that are high up. High up, yeah. You can look at things that are high up. Birds. Ooh, that's a good one. You might look for birds. What might you look for, Emerson, with binoculars? A squirrel. A squirrel. So what happens when you look through here? Things get bigger. They look bigger. Do they actually get bigger or they just look bigger? They look bigger, yeah. So it, it kind of brings something far away. It makes it feel like it's really close, right? Um, so if I'm going to look for birds, I'm going to look in, in the congregation. Any birds in here? Where would I look? Outside. Outside, okay. Let's go over here to the window. Let's see. Okay, didn't see any birds. All right, done. Is that what you would do? Would you look for just one second? No, we'd look some more. Let's look some more. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You want to look? You see any birds? I don't see any yet. 
But we would need to be patient, probably. We'd need to be, well, here's a big word, persistent. Do you know what persistent means? Sort of. Is you keep doing something. You keep trying. So we would keep over here. We would keep looking for birds. We'd look around all over and see if we could find any birds. And we would wait and be patient. I, I know why we can't see Yeah? Them. Why? Because there are clouds. Because there's clouds? You think the birds are, are hiding? It's cold? They might be heading south. Yeah, so we'd have to be really patient. If there was a certain kind of bird we were looking for, we might have to be really patient. We might see other birds first but not see the bird we're looking for. There's a game that uh, we have on our Nintendo Wii where you're looking for birds through binoculars and my kids are much better at it than I am. I don't find the birds very quickly on there. So why in the world am I talking about looking for birds? I don't know. Oh, well, I guess I should know. Huh? Uh, so we have to be patient, we have to persist, we have to keep doing it. So Jesus told a story today and he said that we need to be persistent in prayer. We need to pray always. Keep praying. So if you're going to pray to God, we just say, um, Dear God, thanks for today. I'm in. And then you're done forever? No, you're going to pray again and again and again. We pray every day. Sometimes we pray at our meals. Sometimes we pray at bedtime. Sometimes we pray if we've got a big test at school. Sometimes we pray for our football team to win. Right? Admit it. Sometimes you do, don't you? Sometimes. <laughs> there were a lot of prayers going on between Tennessee and Alabama fans yesterday. I know that because I'm from Tennessee and have a lot of family members that were pretty excited about that game. Some Illini fans pretty excited about a win yesterday as well. But we pray a lot. We pray for people to get better if they're sick. We pray for them to get better. And do we need to just do that once and stop? No, we keep, keep doing it. We're patient, because things don't always happen when we want them to happen, do they? If I say um, that uh, I want somebody to get well and they don't get well immediately, that's probably not going to happen immediately, is it? It's going to take a little time, so we got to be patient, and we keep doing it. We keep praying. So Jesus wants us to remember that we should pray always, and don't give up, and don't just go look for birds one time and be all done, but keep, keep praying, keep being persistent. Keep doing it over and over again. And it makes like the binoculars where things are far away and they feel close. When we pray more and more to God, then we feel closer to God. God's really here all the time, but sometimes we don't feel that close to God. But the more we pray and have conversations with God, the closer that we'll feel. And that works for us little kids and us big kids too, doesn't it? Now let's remember to pray. Let's pray right now, okay? Dear God, thanks for giving us the opportunity to spend time with you in prayer. Help us to remember that you want to hear from us all the time. So let us pray to you often. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming down. There's a prayer ground back there. You can color and Play-Doh and all those kind of fun things. And again, that's for everybody. Anybody who wants to go back there. gospel according to Luke. Today we're in Luke chapter 18, the first, ver first eight verses. I invite you to listen for God's word for you. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him asking, give me justice in this case against my adversary. For a while, the judge refused, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God or respect people, but I will give this widow justice because she keeps bothering me. Otherwise, there will be no end to her coming here and embarrassing me. 
And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Won't God provide justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will give them justice quickly. But when the human one comes, will he find faithfulness on earth? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 1825, the United States Postal Service started a dead letter office to deal with undeliverable mail. In recent years, more than 90 million undeliverable items end up at this office annually. This office is included in the classic film, Miracle on 34th Street, when mail addressed to Santa Claus gets sent to Kris Kringle at the courthouse by way of the dead letter office. Yet the real dead letter office, which is now called the much less interesting name, Mail Recovery Center, mail arrives when it's not clearly addressed and the sender's identity is unknown. There the letter is open and its contents examined for clues to the sender's identity. If the return address cannot be determined and the sending address cannot be figured out, the letter is destroyed. It never reaches its destination and whatever communication was attempted by the writer does not reach anyone. Have you ever felt that way about praying? Have you ever felt that somehow your prayers must have been misaddressed and so they just never made it anywhere at all? Have you felt like you were talking and talking but nobody was listening? That's how the widow in today's gospel lesson must have felt. And I think if we're honest, most of us have felt that way about our prayer sometimes. The widow in today's gospel reading had to be tired of coming back to this judge over and over again and getting nowhere. Her request ended up in the dead letter office time and time again, and yet she was relentless. She kept on. We don't know the particulars of her story. We know that she was a widow, which automatically put her in a difficult place in biblical times. How often do we read about our call to take care of widows and orphans in the Bible? And in the patriarchal society of that day, widows had no one to protect them or to care for them, especially if they had no sons, and there's no indication here that this widow does. So the widow was supposed to be a protected person, but in this case she was the victim of some injustice. And the judge she went to for help just ignored her. The judge has words I I just find humorous. The judge actually says to himself, I don't fear God or respect people. Or as it's paraphrased in the message, I care nothing about what God thinks, even less what people think. It seems like such a reality would be more of an unconscious factor than a spoken thought, but this judge is apparently well aware that he is a classic villain. Even so, this judge eventually gives in and grants justice to the widow because he just can't bear to listen to her anymore. Grant me justice, she keeps yelling at him. And justice prevails in the end. It prevails for all the wrong reasons, though. The judge does not grant her justice because it's the right thing to do. The judge grants her justice because she keeps bugging him. The original Greek, when the judge says that she'll keep embarrassing him, actually means to strike under the eye. In other words, give a black eye. The judge says that this woman is going to give him a black eye if he doesn't give in to her. Now, that might be metaphorical rather than literal, but this judge grants her justice only because he doesn't want to deal with her anymore. He doesn't want to be embarrassed by her bugging him day after day. The judge is still unjust. The judge still doesn't fear God. The judge still doesn't respect people. He simply relents against the torment of this woman who bugged him so. So is that what God's like? Is Jesus telling us that God doesn't want to help us, but if we just annoy God enough with our prayers, then God will eventually do what we ask? No, I I don't believe that's what Jesus had in mind. Some parables are allegories where each character represents something else. Other parables like today's parable are the kind that is called a how much more parable or from the lesser to the greater. There's a similar similar parable just a few chapters back in Luke where we read, which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish? If the child asked for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? 
How much more? This parable is not showing how the God, God compares to the judge. It is actually a contrast of God against the judge. The judge is unjust, and yet he does the right thing eventually. How much more then will our gracious and loving God do what is right? This is a story of God's goodness, not a story of God's reluctance to do good and our need to pester God into doing it. It is also a story about perseverance, though. The the text we read today does not say, you must tell God continually what you want so that God will relent and do what it is you want. That's not the persistence the parable tells us about. The persistence is for our own sake. Praying is not really about telling God what it is that we want. I once attended a conference where Tony Campolo was the featured speaker, and he spoke a bit that weekend about prayer. He said, we usually pray all wrong. We'll say, God, Sister Mary's in the hospital. And God responds, really? Which hospital? No, God knows. God knows exactly what's going on already. God knows what we need and what we want. Praying is not really about telling God what is going on in our lives. It's about communing with God. It's about relationship. It's about focusing on God and God's plans for the world so that our will gradually becomes more and more in tune with God's will. And that is hard work. In a society which advertises things for us to desire and tells us to put our desires above all else, it is hard work to set aside those desires, some petty and some not so petty, in order to focus on the will of God. God wants to give us good things. I'm just not so sure that God wants to give us luxury cars and fancy meals and expensive jewelry and all the things we see advertised relentlessly all around us. Those things aren't inherently bad, but they probably aren't the top of God's priority list for us. We are to be persistent in prayer because Jesus knows that the only way we, that our will can become attuned to God's will instead of attuned to the will of the corporations that want to consume their products. We are to be persistent because opening our hearts to God and listening to God's heart is something that takes much practice. But I think there's another dimension to this parable. Jesus mentions people who cry out to him day and night. Why? Why are they crying? The people that Jesus mentions are probably like this widow, victims of injustice. They are crying out day and night because justice has so long eluded them. And isn't that what we see in our world? Don't we see that justice in our world is so often denied to those who most need it? The news shows us that the rich and powerful often get away with crime with little more than a slap on the wrist, if that, while the poor who have no access to fancy lawyers so often get lengthy sentences. And that's where we come into the picture. We are to help bring justice to those who have known no justice. This parable is about our role in helping to spread justice on this earth. When others cry out day and night, We are to respond. At that same conference years ago, Tony Campolo told us about a former student of his at Eastern University where Campolo taught for many years. Brian Stevenson was a star student committed to scholarship and to Jesus Christ. After he graduated from Eastern, Brian went on to Harvard Law School and graduated in the top of his class. He could have had a very lucrative career in corporate law, living a luxurious lifestyle, Instead, he chose to go to Montgomery, Alabama to be a public defender. You might have heard of him or read his excellent book, Just Mercy, or seen the film based on the book. In Alabama, Brian Stevenson serves as defense counsel for people who could not afford a brilliant Harvard-trained lawyer, but they get Brian Stevenson for free. He said that all too often, poor people don't receive justice. They are the recipients of injustice, just like this poor widow Jesus told us about. And Campola quoted Brian Stevenson as saying, that hasn't happened in Montgomery, Alabama. Here they get me, and I'm good. We are to find those victims of injustice, those who Jesus said are crying out day and night, and we're to join them in their crying out. We're to join them in their quest for justice. Prayer 
persistent prayer like Jesus taught us is not about God giving us things. It's about persistently calling on the name of God day after day, hour after hour, until our will is attuned to the will of God. It's about persistently working toward justice for those who lack it. It's persistently seeking the kingdom of God, and it's something that we should be doing at all times. Prayer is to be persistent. It is to be constant. It's to be a part of each moment of our lives. This is the rare parable that tells us at the beginning what it's all about. Luke introduces this parable with this line. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. We are to pray continuously, to pray always so that we are more and more attuned to God's will and we are not to be discouraged. Because as Jesus reminds us, God is with us. So let us follow what Jesus asked of us. Pray always. Don't be discouraged. I have a feeling the first just might lead us to the second. Thanks be to God. Reminder about our peace and global witness offering. The local portion will go to Compassion for Campers. We are, last I checked, still short of our goal, so we do uh, encourage you to contribute to the peace and justice offering, peace and global witness offering. That is, um, there are some information out there you can give through the website or um, by check or cash. Thank you so much. Now, with gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, we bring our gifts to God. Let's pray. Loving God, with faith and hope, we offer these gifts. Use them, even as you use us, to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ, the Lord of our lives. Amen.
As we prepare to go to God in prayer, we are mindful of some of the friends and members in need, Barb and Tim Arnold, Barb recovering from sinus surgery and Tim recovering from back surgery and Tim had a fall this week and, um, and is uh, in not good condition from that. So um, he sees the surgeon again this coming week. So please be in prayer for them. Uh, for Phil Dom, who has a, a heart issue he's dealing with, and uh, Kristen Matter, who has uh, cataract surgery this week. Others in our hearts we bring before our God now in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, eternally present and graciously close, we are grateful for what you have given us in Jesus Christ life and love without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift to you the cares and concerns of our hearts, the burdens and worries of our lives. We pray that the sick would be healed, that the broken would be mended, that the mournful would be comforted. We pray that warriors would yield to peace, that leaders would gain wisdom, that the forsaken would be gathered in. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled, the poor would be lifted up, and the anxious would be released. We pray for children in their growing and for youth in their seeking. We pray for those making new starts and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices and those enduring painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness and for those who are feeling empty. We pray that your church might claim its potential, that the body of Christ might be strengthened by its many parts, that the work of ministry might be done with joy and thanksgiving. We pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for the faith to trust your promises to us, for the vision to see your kingdom among us even now. We pray for all that you would have us pray and the perseverance to pray continuously. We pray for those for whom no one prays. And we pray all these things in the name of the one ceaselessly praying for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Trusting in Christ, we offer together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the life of the church this week, we celebrate a wedding on Friday evening of Alex and Mary Grace Matheson, now Ferguson. Uh, excitement for that couple as they begin their new life together. Birthdays this week, Dan Joellis on Friday, Lenali Patrick on Saturday, and Ryan Tremaney also on Saturday. Anniversaries, Dave and Evie Davis on Tuesday. This week's uh, meetings include the, the session meeting uh, at a, this morning online, and uh, for elders who are here, there are printed packets in the gathering area if you'd like to pick out one. Um, lectionary study on Wednesday, now dinner, advanced bell ringers and choir on Wednesday, CBJ on Thursday, men's Bible study on Saturday, highway cleanup Saturday at 9, and building grounds meeting Saturday at 9.30. So if there are those who uh, can, can help out with the highway cleanup, that would be greatly appreciated uh, be here at nine and we'll get you all uh, suited up and ready to, to go out and, and clean up um, creation around us. Announcements, uh, next Sunday we will have Sunday school and brunch. It's been a little while since we've had Sunday school and brunch because of a uh, holiday a couple weeks ago, but that is uh, coming up next week. And a reminder about the Wacom fundraiser, the chicken dinner, that is now just over a week away. Um, it is Monday, October 24th. There's uh, some flyers and little, uh, little things you can take with you. All you can eat roasted chicken dinner as a fundraiser for Wacom to 
provide financial assistance to our neighbors who are in need. Uh, I invite you to get your tickets uh, from, from Linda today or from, uh, from the website, or you can walk in on that day. So pick up that information. Also, we are continuing the coat drive uh, for Wacom. So uh, if you have coats or other winter clothing that could be put to good use by someone else, please bring those to the church. With those uh, announcements in our minds, let us stand together and sing our sending hymn. trusting that God is with us and for us and praying continuously so that we do not become discouraged. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us and abide in us in each moment, this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>